Now we've talked a lot about overhyped watches, but what about new releases that are somewhat underrated and we can actually try in the flesh, not just review from pictures online, which really serves nobody. So today I'm going to exclusively have a look at two of the hottest Swiss made new releases for 2024 in the metal. So hot in fact, I'm going to risk getting a divorce, put my money where my mouth is and pull the trigger on one of them. Where's that voice coming from? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I'll do a quick wristwatch check, wearing my Santos Galbi by Cartier there. Little moon phase from the Wall Street era, as we are discussing a moon phase today. And of course, that's why I got a blue jacket. Yes, I picked the watch and then I dress accordingly. The way, <laughs> the way it should be done, right? Yeah, that is just me, but anyway, let's get into it. Now I've talked at great depth about the brands covered in today's video last year. So I'm gonna skip the usual deep dive on the historic backstories and get right into why they are absolutely killing it this year. First is this stunning sunburst blue dial variation of the gorgeously handsome classic power reserve big date. But do not let the corporate sterility of the name fool you. FC seemed to be conquering a part of the Swiss watch market that was formerly the domain of the now unholy trinity, especially as the big three, VC, AP and PP, desperately try to appeal to the more increasingly youthful, newly moneyed demographic, no longer so interested in the classically dressy traditional watches. Their endless contemporary spin-offs of Genta-esque inspired sports-driven offerings, often garishly ostentatious designs, prove this. FC does modern too, and who can blame them? The whole industry wants a piece of that Gerald Genta cash cow action, including yours truly, as you'll see shortly. Let's be brutally honest about Frédéric Constant. They made a name for themselves, making homage watches a far more expensive, traditional mid-century kind of PP, AP, VC, GP, right? They've become more of their own thing, technically as well. You know, the Turbion I almost uh, pulled the trigger on last year. Ironically, kind of taking the place of what they used to homage. It's so funny how things turn out. The key to Frédéric Constant's success is obvious, especially if you look at the predecessor of today's watch, the Moon Phase from 2015. SJX Magazine proudly titled their review, and I quote, introducing a $4,000 Moon Phase that looks like a $250,000 vintage Patek. Now FC has come a long way since then, evolving their own design language out of that classicism of the mid-century unholy trinity. We still see elements of the Patek reference 2438 and 2497 in the almost kettle shape of the case curvature. They've done an outstanding job of creating a visually striking harmony by a careful positioning of the complications and use of space within the dial. Look at the placement of the power reserve hand. It's equidistant from the 8 and the 10, almost as if it's an indices itself. And then on the opposite side, the 2 o'clock and the 3 o'clock just narrowly miss that big, exaggerated, La Chute style double date display. Very indicative of, as you can see in the background here, a Lange from that area in Germany. They were inspired by the Dresden Opera House with their famous clock inside the um, theatre area. And of course, you've seen it in the Glasshütte original Panomatic I reviewed last year. Always a welcome, more legible interpretation of the date, but crucially, mechanically far more complex to achieve because of course we have double date wheels uh, with that mesmeric effect when setting the watch. One touch I do love that this definitely gets right over the Lange is that they 
and I'll add a picture here, they always have a negative space, which has always kind of bothered me about the ALS, whereas this has a nice zero. So there's always that kind of balanced uh, look. And of course, it's beautifully framed as well. Between the two steel versions, I have to say I prefer the silver tone sunburst variant over this stunning midnight blue, simply because of the greater contrast to the moon phase sky and very subtle little dash of cherry red print to the lower part of the power reserve warning scale. The faceted lance hands complement the old fashioned pocket watch onion style crown and archetypal bosom cut moon phase that collectively are so indicative of pre-portable horology. FC is extremely adept at marrying these old school elements with the contemporary and always to an extremely high standard in quality in the final execution. Inside is the debut of FC's 31st in-house produced caliber, an impressive statistic, especially when you consider Patek currently only offers 15 of their own proprietary based calibers, excluding of course the grand complications. Not bad at all for such a relatively younger brand. Oh, and it's even hackable. Some of the Pateks are not even hackable, which is kind of crazy. So that's cool. In terms of accuracy, I'm getting near COSC levels of performance. Be really nice if they put on their website or were a little bit more transparent to what degree this is regulated to. It's all adorned with the typical trifecta of bluing, striping and pelage, but more crucially, like their record-breaking world timer, cleverly engineered all to be completely controllable from the single crown without the need of any hidden pushes or any compromise to its performance at the high 28,800 VPH with a 50 hour power reserve. Now this might not seem revolutionary, but from a watchmaking perspective at this price, worthy of a standing ovation. So let's address negatives. The name, uh, a bit uninspired. Take a leaf out of a Genta Royal Oak equivalent, Laureato, which is graduate in Italian. Doesn't sound very romantic, but it just sounds better in a foreign language. They could have called it Grande Data or maybe something in French or I don't know, just anything but big date. <laughs> a little bit pedestrian for such a beautifully elegant watch you know complete it i mean that's why us enthusiasts we give names to watches helps to identify and give a character to a watch otherwise they're just boring reference numbers like the rolex hulk or the rolex batman or the seiko tuner the seiko willard etc etc personally i would have preferred this to be 38 millimeters and only manual wind get rid of the rotor get rid of the exhibition case back i understand why it's there automatics are more mainstream 40 millimeters is more of a crowd pleaser i totally get it but i would have loved to see this elegantly thin as a traditional mid-century dress watch like the aesthetics suggest and want to be you know let's go all the way Right, before we get into this, I'll do a quick knife check. The Benchmade old grippy, old griptilian is back. So let's do the uh, first incision. <laughs> okay, here we go. Beautiful suede case. Nevada Grinch always does a really nice packaging. Drum roll. Oh my God. Oh my god, oh, look at that. Is there any plastic on top? Yeah, there is. Let me just get rid of the plastic. Look at that. So this is a meteorite dial, new release for 2024. Same setup. So this is the no date version as mine with the basket weave pattern inspired by the upholstery of, because this is a racing watch originally, hence F77. It feels so much lighter because it's, it's titanium. Yeah, full titanium. Wow, that feels so different. I don't have a titanium watch. Am I gonna upgrade? Should I upgrade? That's just gorgeous, the way it plays in light. That is so different from basket weave. I mean, that's pretty cool too, but this is something else. And the weight of it, oh, seems to be the same size. Let's just double check. Yeah, it seems to be exactly the same. Yeah, I am in trouble. Very excited, <laughs> but also slightly uh, concerned because Oh my God, what am I going to do now? Ah, I better find a good divorce lawyer. How am I going to, um, 
How am I going to explain this? <laughs> Unlike FC, Nevada Grenchin has a far richer, prestigious history with several genuine, highly venerated heavyweight icons under their belt that we previously explored. The F-77 is a recent reinterpretation of their own Genta era reaction from the 1970s, brought back under the visionary talents of watch entrepreneur Guillaume Ledet, the Jean-Claude Beaver of our generation who has also been responsible for Vulcane's great comeback, along with the highly innovative collaboration of the Space One brand. Last year saw a Jetsons-styled futuristic affordable jump hour that got a lot of acclaim, and this year was no different, launching the world's most affordable orrery complication with the Tellurium. Now, if you've spotted, among all the other hidden clues and Easter eggs right of Darby's famous painting in my intro, you will know just how cool and horologically significant they are. But let's return back down to Earth with this new addition to the F-77 collection. In my comparative review with the market-leading overhyped Tissot PRX, the F-77 absolutely dominated. This new addition only strengthens its position, in my opinion. Not only does the use of titanium elevate comfort and its uniqueness over the PRX, but as discussed in my recent Squale review, this is not the cheaper grade 2 as used by Tudor for their Pelagos, but a far stronger, more luxurious, expensive to source and machine grade 5. On top of that, the additional choices between ancient gemstones like lapis lazuli, aventurine, anthracite and rarest of all, meteorite rock from space, as we see here, makes it a far more visually interesting and compelling design. Not to mention each dial being completely unique. While certainly there is a jump in price, it is still reasonable and dare I say great bang per buck. Now, is it worth almost three times as much in comparison to an equivalent automatic PRX? Well, I definitely think so, especially considering they're a much smaller brand and having designed many watches myself, I know how expensive it is to achieve something to this level. So in terms of negatives, well, there's not much uh, different from the steel. Uh, the same negative as apply. I wish it had an aftermarket uh, rubber strap or leather strap or something just to differentiate it and really, you know, make it especially more usable in a, a more sporty attire. That would have been really, really cool. Just imagine a rubber strap on this. Uh, the loom isn't that great. It's rather diminutive. Not the end of the world. Still functional. What else? Cretini. Ignoranti are going to dismiss this as just a, a Royal Oak ripoff, which it is and it isn't. It's inspired by that age, done the whole history of the uh, predecessor of, or the original from 1976, I think it was. Yeah, it looks very Royal Oakish, but I can tell you, as a former owner of the Royal Oak, it doesn't feel or perform like it at all. It's remarkable how different it actually is on the wrist. But I'm not buying it to be a Royal Oak, I'm buying it for what it is. Scratch that itch, that Genta itch, without spending a fortune, and I'm happy with that. Uh, if people want to say it's a rip-off, that's their issue, not mine. Despite me being happier than ever before in my own watch collecting journey, it's obvious I have become highly cynically critical of the problematic hive mind mentality and hype polluted state of the watch industry. Well, this dynamic duo proves there still is solid new releases beyond the hype that actually bring something fun, interesting and of good value to the table. The fact that both brands have entrusted me with giving my respectfully honest, unfiltered opinion speaks volumes about them, and as a result, endears me to them further, far more so than the overly predictable rivals of each. I welcome watches like this FC. It has the old money, less is more sophistication in aesthetics, the classy sprezzatura of not trying too hard, but crucially, without the new money vulgarity to the price tag traditionalism in an age of trashy TikTok quick to age disposable trends that will ensure it ages like a fine Chateau Lafitte for many generations. Interestingly, FC also did put out a limited edition with a meteorite dial themselves, but if anything, seeing the F77 in the metal 
I'm sorry, that's a terrible pun there and not intended, but seeing the F-77 only highlights how meteorite dials work far better with the more modernist styling of a sports watch. It's reminiscent of the ordered, abstract, primordial art of Richard Long, a fitting contrast to the Denny's Lasden-esque brutalism of the geometric angular case shapes. In conclusion, pure class all round, two undeniable winners, and certainly high on my list of the best releases of 2024 so far. But it's still relatively early in the year, so let's see how it plays out, and I'll recap on this just before the start of 2025. So am I gonna upgrade? I think so. This is a much more unique take on the F-77. I don't think I'm gonna get this opportunity again. I don't wanna miss out. Titanium, I got a taste for it with the Squalin Master with that recent review, another big release of the year from another hugely underrated brand. So yeah, this definitely is a whole new experience of the F-77. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna flip my blue date version and then I'm gonna reach out to Nevada Grenchin, pull the trigger and this and hopefully keep it. This is a sample. I'm not even sure if I can buy this or I'm gonna have to put an order in and pre-order it whenever it comes out. Massive shout out to both brands and thank you to them for lending these in. I'm in trouble, I'm, <laughs> I'm in trouble. But technically, you know, blood in, blood out. I'm not actually adding another watch because one's going as well. So uh, it's not as bad. I'm still staying on target for my uh, smaller collection at the end of the year. Anyway, that's all from me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Onwards and upwards. Ciao.